Hi everyone, so long time no see, so I'm happy to have you back here on my YouTube channel and I want to make this tutorial for a while now. So I'm currently working on this uh, on the of uh, my uh, Xolo dog and what I wanted to show you during this tutorial and the purpose of this full tutorial will be to show you how to not to like create all of this portrait because it's something that you can definitely see on my previous tutorial tutorial about how to do the texturing, the procedural texturing of the um, uh, the Sphinx cats in Mari. But what I want to show you and what I want to work with you is basically how we can create the displacement for the nose, which is a little bit granulated on this, this render because it's done in a um, smaller resolution. But that's the kind of um, displacement we may want to do. The reason why we, we may want to do this displacement is that because we already have access to the like really interesting, amazing displacement of texture XYZ with the skin where there is so much detail, so much high frequency details, uh, so much so much granularity, so much so many interesting informations. We have access to that. But the ones we do not have access to are displacement for the nose, displacement for the pads of dogs, for example. And that can be interesting pattern you may want to do yourself. You may want to sculpt them yourself directly in ZBrush. Let me show you some example of what we may want to do ourselves. We may want to do that directly by sculpting them. And then once it's been sculpted, then we want to reuse them because we have access to this displacement already. So if we have access to this displacement, we may want to combine it with texturing XYZ displacement. So this kind of pieces, there's like really interesting patterns and um, I was aiming to go for this one because I'm working on a dog that is living in deserts or more like really high temperature area. So I'm aiming for something that is a little bit dry and that's the kind of displacement I want to achieve. So I want to achieve this displacement. And again, the idea is I want to make it compatible with texturing XYZ so I can get my three channel displacement instead of having to sculpt it again. I have my displacement that has been sculpted in ZBrush and then I want to project it on top of new models. So like, for example, let me show you the model, uh, the model I already have in ZBrush. I will just focus on the nose, isolate the nose, zoom in and show you the displacement that has been sculpted in ZBrush and get rid of the perspective so we do not have this kind of really high contrasted visual in ZBrush. So this is my displacement for the nose and something that we can see is that it has been generated on 15 million for the nose itself, just for the nose. So it's a very high um, poly count for one piece of geometry and that most of the time not something that we want to have to sculpt again by hand. And I want to reuse it. I want to project it in Mari because Mari is based on pixels and not on polygons. So I will benefit from the fact that I have access to pixels instead of having to multiply to subdivide in ZBrush to play with polygons to resculpt again. I will have access to pixel, which is a huge benefit. And I will transform that into a texturing XYZ displacement and then be able to project that into, into, um, into Mari. So quick reminder to show you some texturing XYZ displacements so you are uh, familiar with my process and familiar with the process of texturing XYZ displacement in general. So this is texturing XYZ. If you go into multi-channel faces, again, we have this displacement. So we'll not use a multi-channel faces. I believe that these ones are made mainly for human to transform from one model to another. Uh, it's not a great idea to use them, to buy them if you want to do projection on creature. What you probably want to use is probably more face displacement or body displacement, but do not use multi-channel faces for that. Uh, do not use these ones, uh, V faces for, for uh, doing creature. But just to show you what we have access to, so again, something that you saw on the previous page is that we have texturing Swayze style with red channel having so this red channel having uh, an information, this is displacement with a mid value of 0 0.5. The red channel have a displacement information. Then the green channel have pump information and the last channel should have microscopic 
information. So three different displacements packed in just one file, one single file. So the idea of having these three channels at once is that you can project them on top of your model and uh, you can project all the three channels at once in, in MARI instead of having to like rely on other software to do the, to do the projection or to transfer um, multi-channel displacement from one model to another. And if we have them separated, what it means is that we can control the different intensity separately. So if we want to get more displacement, we play with the red channel. If we want to get more pump or a high frequency displacement, we play with the green channel. And if we want to break even further this displacement for extreme close-up, then we play with the blue channel. Three channels displacement is a huge benefit, is something that is amazing and definitely something that we want to do. Problem is, once we want to um, make them compatible with like previous displacement that has been done in another packages that has been generated from Skull, for example, generated from ZBrush, we need to convert them and we need to find a way to convert our sculpted displacement so we can project it again and make it compatible with that texturing XYZ workflow. Let me show, show you the final output of what we what we will achieve with this three-part tutorial. So we'll just open Nuke, open this, and this is the kind of displacement we'll end up with. Displacement that has been generated from sculpting with red channel information, so displacement or high, uh, low frequency displacement. It's low frequency, but because it's focused on a really tiny HARA, it will still be high frequency in the end, but it's a low frequency of the high frequency then the bump or the highest frequency of the um, of the microscopic displacement of the texturing xyz style displacement we'll achieve together so red green and finally blue which is microscopic displacement even further even smaller even higher frequency if we really want to make sure that the surface of our model is looking rougher then we break it up even further with even even tiniest displacement and this has been generated with sculpting directly into zbrush and it's a result of what you can see here and the huge benefit from having this workflow is that now i can project it along with my texturing XYZ file. If I'm showing you, I think I have like one texturing XYZ style. This is my texturing XYZ file. Again, um, three channels, red, green, and blue having different informations. But what you can see is that this is coming from texturing XYZ and this is coming from my own workflow. And they are similar in terms of color, in terms of value range, in terms of uh, style. Uh, red from my own displacement, red from texturing XYZ uh, displacement, then green from my own displacement, green from texturing XYZ displacement, and finally blue from my own and blue from texturing XYZ. So similar, same fashion, same projectable displacement, switch channel displacement, and we will be able to use that um, in, in MARI. Okay, so this is it for the introduction of the workflow of what we will be able to achieve in this tutorial. Just to go further into how the tutorial will be split, it will be sl split into three parts. The first part of this tutorial is how to prepare the model. Um, how to prepare the model, so for example, if you start with a model that already exists, if I start with my XOLO and the XOLO, I just want to focus on the nose, but problem is if I only focus on the nose, I will have access to only 80 or 30,000 faces. So how do I split this model and how do, do I maximize the density and the amount of details I can get out of it? Then second part of the tutorial will be how to export your displacement and how to um, make it compatible with with texturing XYZ inside of Nuke. Then third part will be how to import this displacement once it's made compatible in Nuke, how do we import it in MARI and how do we project it in MARI? How do we project it? But how do we play with the different channels? How do we get different intensity from red green and blue channels. How do we um, um, play with that? And how do we project also some texturing Swayze displacements 
along with our own displacement. So three videos uh, for this uh, for, for this tutorial, and uh, I hope that it will be really informative for you. I hope that you will be able to uh, learn a lot from me, and looking forward to see your results once you will have the you will have done the tutorial yourself, and you will you will have generated your own version of your text and displacement. That's it for this introduction, guys. See you in the next video.